S tier builds. They're the cream of the crop, the best of the best, generally marked by being essentially overpowered and extremely potent. That is, with the exception of one that consistently makes its way into this position, despite generally being, well, mediocre in the vast majority of situations and only shining at one key thing, unique farming. So today we're going to look at the Magic Find Berserker, the high APM unique hunter that will doom you to carpal tunnel syndrome and end up with you giving Pindle more attention than even Neelithak does. Personally, I actually see the value in this build. It's good at the one thing it does well, which is popping in on top of champions and uniques, scaring off the trash, and nuking the big target with big hits, followed by the obvious barbarian trick of find item to get even more drops. Just want to be quick in and quick out, since lingering or going after less ideal targets like act bosses or dense zones like cows will show off this build's weaknesses. This is why this is a build I'll almost never recommend to a new player, or even an intermediate one, unless they're farming something very specific, and even then I usually recommend one that is a bit more consistent and less dependent on skill juggling, since for these types of players the juggling can be a bit of an annoyance at best, and knowing your drops is fairly essential to the smash and grab style of it as well. Now, this dislike is specifically for the magic find version that you'll find posted, well, 99% of the time since hybrid berserkers or even progression style berserkers actually have a significantly better viability but are generally more ideally paired with another skill and notch down their magic find so they can take full advantage of the barbarian durability whereas this one is just kind of squish with a lot of magic find and find item. That said, the core ability of all the mentioned versions of berserker obviously are going to be berserk, a powerful skill that ramps up damage while transforming it to the least resisted damage type, pure magic. The hybrid versions will often take advantage of the fact that Berserk provides smaller versions of this damage conversion to some of the more popular alternate skills like Concentrate and Frenzy, to have what essentially amounts to a one-stop shop for a main attack. Though Whirlwind and Leap Attack Barbarians will also invest in it a bit to deal with physical immunes as well, even though it doesn't provide a direct benefit to them. For the pure Berserkers though, you'll instead be focusing your points into the Berserk synergies themselves, namely Howl and Battle Orders, which both are actually viable skills for this build and kind of vital skills for this build, with Hal providing you the time and protection to focus on the uniques and champions, since it will chase most of the non-elites away with the exception of certain enemies like Oblivion Knights and Minions of Destruction, which are immune to fear. And you also have Battle Orders, which is the new synergy in Resurrected as opposed to Shout, which can be used to bump your life and mana exceptionally high, so you can survive the oncoming onslaught of damage that usually comes with playing the Berserker. Though, whenever we get to the gear end of things, you'll see some ways to you can mitigate this at the cost of magic find. The other big thing you might grab in the Warcry tree, and this is more for the post game, is find item. Though due to how the diminishing returns work, after the first few levels of find item itself, it becomes better to put points into its synergy find potion for 1% per level, which also works out well with Grim Ward if you're using it for a more normal playthrough of this build, since the Berserker is notoriously squishy and Grim Ward can actually provide some fear effects that help out quite a bit, and the slow is not bad either. Now for masteries, it depends on the weapon you're using. For today's, we're using Blade Mastery, or if you're doing Lord of Destruction, that would be Sword Mastery. This is because I'm using Grief Phase Blade, though for a normal playthrough, you'd choose the weapon that you want to use along the way, with swords having the best end game, but axes generally being the easiest to find a balance of damage on, and maces, polearms, and spears generally being geared more towards your two-handed builds. And you also of course want to pick up your 1.1 wonders, increase speed and natural resistance since there's really no downside to dropping the spare points into these for a massive bump to resist and a decent bump to movement speed. Now progression wise, the Berserker in terms of being a magic finder is an end game build only, something that you tend to have the kit for and then respec into or get someone to rush them then leech experience to level up on. But it is possible to build one to go through the game normally with gear you find along the way, but you generally want to go for one of the hybrid flavors, such as the Frenzy, Concentrate, Warcry, or Whirlwind Barb with Berserk acting more as support. That said, if you want to take this build from 0 to the 90s without resetting anything, you can, but you need to take some things into consideration. Such as, in normal, you'll mostly just be using your synergies and basic stuff to get up to your 30s, so you can kind of get your chosen mastery if you want, berserk synergies as well are kind of nice, but maybe some points into find item skills to give you an extra chance at drops, though I wouldn't invest a lot in them just yet since they don't really help with your progress that much. 
as you get into Nightmare, you should be working your way up to level 20 Berserk as kind of like your main goal. And while doing so, you'll want to go the shield route. This means axe and shield or sword and shield as your main tool for making progress. Since while Berserk does rob you of your defense for a chunk of time, it does not impact your block rate. And this will be your primary source of survivability while going solo self found. In Hell difficulty, you should have max Berserk, max mastery for your chosen weapon, and usually one of your Berserk synergies maxed. I personally prefer Battle Orders since the duration of the Fear effect is decent enough on Howl with just a few skill points, even if you wanted to focus on that rather than Berserk. It is worth noting, as you're progressing through Hell, the use of a shield is even more important, even if it's something super cheap like a Rhyme for Cannot Be Frozen, just to have that chance to block. And if made in the right shield, it can be fairly easy to get a decent block with it as well, just thanks to the naturally having increased block chance and resist too. Personally, I like kite shields and their exceptional or elite versions. Stat-wise, this means you're going to deviate a bit from the usual, just enough strength for your gear and rest and vitality model that most builds do. Instead, favor enough strength for gear, enough dexterity for max block, and then the rest into vitality. One thing you might also consider if going solo self-found is actually investing one point into leap attack. Even though it's not standard to the build, since you won't have teleport, it can help a ton with mobility. And since it will probably be a question, if you go with one of the hybrid variants, you usually invest in the other skill first, and then come back and pick up Berserk later on, since its primary purpose on those builds is for dealing with physical immunes, not really primary killing like it is for this build. Now, in terms of chase gear, it depends on what you're looking for. In the footage in the back, background I went through with the heavy magic find version. Not just to show off the stuff that it would normally farm, but also is why you would not want to use this variant to farm a lot of places, especially not swarm zones like cows. And in that magic find version, we generally run an offhand weapon for pure magic find. In this case, it's a six ist crystal sword, though there are more budget items like Blade of Alibaba or Gold Dagger that work fairly well too, and are a lot cheaper to get set up with, and much more likely to be found on a normal run. If you're going for a more normal setup that's not magic find oriented, you'll generally instead want to opt for something like Storm Shield with an um rune to cap your resistances. If you want pure damage, there are options like Phoenix, but you generally will not bother with those since they will rob you of corpses, which is the big advantage of playing Barbarian in the endgame, since he can force double drops from uniques and champions, as well as just normal mobs, but the normal mobs won't drop nearly as good of stuff, and they don't have a fixed drop pool. Similarly, there's a split in the armor. For Magic Find, you hands down go Enigma, and you use it to jump to the level 85 areas, kill the uniques, shout at the corpses like you want to see their manager, and then rinse and repeat like a Karen equivalent of Santa Claus. For more just fighting style with this build, choices like Fortitude are the go-to since it does help your overall damage quite a bit, outside of dipping into extremely uncommon finds like Jeweler's Armor with max damage jewels. This pattern can be repeated for the rest of the gear, but I'll save the more durability-focused Berserker options for the hybrid videos that will be coming in the near future, just to keep this video as close to that 10-minute target as possible and keep you on the magic find path, since I don't like 30-minute build videos. So for the magic find setup, we want to get a decent attack speed, which since we're using grief as our main weapon is actually fairly reasonable to do. Since this one has 40% increased attack speed, getting us most of the way there, and we use grief here since it is a significant damage weapon, and since it's in a phase blade repair cost is not going to be an issue. Though you can definitely get higher damage options if you don't mind that repair issue and the cost that's going to come with it. And we get the rest of our attack speed from our belt, with an upgraded gold wrap providing max slots, increased attack attack speed and decent magic find, and for the rest of our stuff we focused on that magic find as well for the most part, with war travelers as the boots providing a bit of extra damage in magic find, chance guards on the gloves again providing magic and gold find, and harlequin crest providing the magic find and plus skills, and in this case cannot be frozen with a cham rune, which I'm not the biggest fan of doing, but it does keep us from having to use rhyme as a shield or raven frost in the end game, and raven frost can actually bite this build kind of in the butt because it can chill and shatter targets, but it's not a ton of the time. And as far as the rings, they're just magic find rings, which I did use two perfect magic find wisp projectors on, just to make myself mildly happy and trolly while running this. The reality is the best rings for this are generally fortuitous rings of fortune, which are 40% magic find, with perfect nagels being the second place at 30% each. There is also a trick you can do with the angelic set for magic find, so I'll throw a card to the set up top if you wanted to 
learn more about it and why it is a budget option. But overall, the gear is more magic find, more better. And personally, I'm not a huge fan of it because it's an extremely active build where you need to be paying attention and pushing those actions per minute to really get your time's worth out of it. So it doesn't really fit into my personal farming style, which is more laid back and chill, right click and win kind of stuff, which really only happens with this build when you're farming something redundant like Pindle, Pindle Skin, which always has the same layout since you can get him without having to watch out for color shifted enemies or auras to pick out a unique to kill. And that's pretty much why his main farming names are Pindle Zerker by more laid back farmers and Pit Zerker by more active farmers, since those are major farming locations that fit his purpose. Though you can also do things like Travancle pretty quickly with him as well, though for that I honestly prefer different builds, but it is a good way to get runes, charms, and jewels efficiently on various barbarian builds. So, was I too harsh on the Magic Find Berserker? Do you love him as a build for your more active playstyle, or do you feel he's consistently overrated? Mention it down below, and if you want to try out a more farming-friendly build that can do just fine filled to the brim with Magic Find gear and, well, laziness, check out the Sorcerer's video on screen now.